I noticed some trouble computing stability margins that stemmed from incorrectly computing the loop gain. So I want to make a video that clarifies how to construct the loop gain so that we do get correct stability margins. Let's consider a single input, single output system. A plant, controller, plant outputs Y, control command R, and controller outputs U. A close loop transfer function. So if we plot the frequency response of the closed loop transfer function for such a system, you may see something like that. You have some bandwidth of that closed loop controller. The fact that it's zero dB means we're stable and we're tracking, but we don't really know what the margins are. So suppose we break the loop at the plan input. U out is K of S times P of S times U in. And so we get our loop gain times u in because loop gain is k of s times p of s, right? And then you plot Nyquist and you see a loop gain up the positive j omega axis of something in the right half plane, indicating we have infinite margin and 100 negative 50 degrees of phase. And you say, well, that's not right. What went wrong? So let's consider uh, just a state feedback system, a regulator, LQR, Kalman's identity or the return difference equality. Directly in that formula, it's just a manipulation of the algebraic Riccati equation, you get the return difference. I call it chi. It's I plus K SI minus A inverse B. And that's where uh, where you can get the definition of the loop gain from directly because we know return difference is I plus LU or the subscript U just denotes that's the loop gain at the plant input. And so we know that then it's the positive K that's the K of S and it doesn't contain the negative feedback. And just to double check that we have our, our bearings straight, we can compute return difference based off of these definitions. So making K of S positive K, then it's minus U out over X. And working through, we get return difference U in minus U out over U in. So it's all consistent. We can conclude then that loop gain is in fact KSI minus A inverse B. Uh, we matched it through the return difference, and that came from Kalman's identity. So the key is that K of S doesn't have the negative feedback sign in it when we construct the loop gain, where that negative feedback is in the uh, state feedback law. We do an example again. Uh, this time we consider possibly it being a command tracker. We have an error multiplied by a gain goes into the plant, there's output. So you break the loop at the plant input. And we actually have a couple options before we do that. If we're going to do a command tracker and we define error as y minus r, then the output of the junction is minus e. If it's a regulator, then r is zero and at the junction it's just minus x. So both of those actually implement the negative feedback law. And both work for the calculation of loop gain. There's u in, there's u out. Going through, now there's where you get the minus sign and then KSI minus A inverse B going around the loop. where K is K of S and resolvent times B is P of S. And so it's, it's specifically minus K of S, P of S times U in. It's minus the loop gain times U in. So the loop gain is minus U out over U in, which is K of S, P of S.
So often when we develop controllers or compensators, uh, we just develop them as a block and we put them in that abstract feedback control format and we analyze them in that way because it's so convenient. And embedded in that is that negative feedback. And we would call that then K of S. This is exactly where we started. You have some dynamic controller, dynamic compensator, all contained within that K of S. So if we do it this way, the correction we have to make to quote unquote K of S is to negate the output of that process. So we started with the loop gain in the wrong plane. And when we multiply by negative one, the output equation of K of S, uh, referring to K of S as if it's in state space form in terms of its output equation. Then we rotate the loop gain uh, minus 180 degrees and it takes a familiar form where we can immediately then see that the gain margin and phase margin are more consistent with our expectations. So in summary, loop gain is K S I minus A inverse B and does not contain the negative sign in the feedback control law in your K of S. So to correct our original situation and be consistent with convention, put a minus sign in front of that K of S. Now, when we use K of S times P of S, we actually determine the correct loop gain.